this beautiful afternoon. It's a sunny afternoon. I haven't seen the sun for quite a few days now. So we're taking a little walk to the back of our property. Just wanted to show some of the things that we find all over the place here. Is what we have in our bush is old equipment. So whenever farmers had no use for an old piece of equipment because it either broke down or for some reason was unusable anymore and they couldn't use it at that time anymore, they would just park it in the bush. And so we find that we have all these pieces of equipment from way back sitting in the bush. So you can see of course that some of it has been sitting for quite some time, some less time, but like this piece here, you can see the trees have been growing quite extensively already over the many, many, many years, right? Right where this machine is sitting. So you can basically tell based on the trees that are growing here and the thickness that these machines definitely have been here at least 10, 15 years and probably longer. And it took a while before the seeds of those trees started to, of course, grow in those locations. But look at here, the bundles of wire, right? Fencing, old fencing. Here's a disc apparatus, and it's just sitting here right on the side. Now, if you go and you look behind here, this bush is uh, it's, uh, just a regular deciduous forest, and it's quite low. So part of this is us, and part of it is from the neighbor. And the neighbor farmer, um, you know, lets it just uh, locate on his uh, side property as tree line because it's so moist and wet, so the trees will suck up the water. So yeah, one of the things that we're probably going to have to do is see if we can get some of this old stuff out, clean it up. But anything that could not be used just gets dumped. So here's all concrete from some concrete slab, quite thick, and they just dumped it here. And of course, when you look, so you can see here the metal ring and you can see the old wheel right there. These are wheels from old wagons, so these are wagons that they would use in the 1800s. So can you imagine that they've been dumping stuff in this bush line for more than a hundred years already? So yeah, let's take a little bit of a further walk to the back of the bush. Alright, again here, if we look you can see the remnants of an old wagon. See the wagon wheels? And it's a shame because if they were left in the barn or in the tin can as we call it, they probably could have survived for a very long time. Maybe we could have refurbished some of them. So we'll continue to walk. Now of course you can see on the side here the right side, and this is all our bush, these are evergreens, all right? And the coniferous trees here, neatly planted in rows, all right? But the deer and the moose sure enjoy this area, and they love to hide out here. And most of the time in winter, you, you will find them here, but even in summertime. Now we have all kinds of different birds here. We have different hawks, and raven, and crows. And if you look in summertime, that's really hard to see, but in wintertime with no leaves, look at the gigantic nest that is there. So I'm pretty sure that either that is a raven nest or one used by the hawks and eagles that are out here, all right? Even this area, we see bald eagles fly over our property. So it's quite 
amazing the biodiversity here in the Saskatchewan back country. So yeah, even though this coniferous forest has been planted many, many, many years, right? All of them have become quite tall and mature. We do see here though that seedlings from the deciduous trees have moved in and are intermingling with the coniferous trees in the open spots. Right, but even, even when you look carefully, you can see tons of little seedlings of the pine and spruce trees that are here. And so even though it was planted artificially, nature is slowly converting it into a more natural forest. And you can see lots and lots of seedlings. So some of these we dig up because they're very close together over here. You can see one, two, three, four, five, all right, really close together. So what we do is we dig them up and we transplant them to areas on the property where we think we definitely need more trees, which of course is uh, helpful for both plant and animal life alike. So, due to the fact that this area is so low, springtime, the snow melt, and of course the rainy season, puts lots of water here at the bases of these trees. So this is quite a swampy area. And so, where there's a swamp, there's frogs. So probably later this spring when the frogs awaken from the winter sleep, I'll make a video and let you hear the fantastic noises that all these amphibians can make together. So now we've come towards the edge and the end of this coniferous forest plantation that is here. This, however, is no longer part of our official property, but the official owner the original owners that used to live here on the property, they uh, rent out the farmland to a big farmer. And so they have no interest in doing anything with this forest. So it's left alone and nothing will be done to it. So of course, we are free to use it. Walk here and uh, yeah, absorb nature in its finest. So, you can see by the length of my shadow here on the snow that uh, it's still very much winter. This is February. But we can clearly see in this area where we don't have daylight savings time. We never change time here. We keep the same time all the time that sunrise in the morning is now very early so it gets light already before 8 and it doesn't get dark until after 6 30 so and that is very nice in February you can see already that much sunlight So here we are at the edge, like I said, at the end of the little coniferous forest. And so when you look towards this edge of the coniferous forest, then you can see already faintly in the bush line, our big barn. And there it is. So 
yeah, from basically the road following along uh, around basically this bush line all the way towards the back. This is uh, part of the 160 acres that these uh, large quarters exist of. Right? If you even look at old ancient pioneer movies, you can see that they were signing over and selling off 160 acre pieces that they call quarters. So yeah, we own then one piece of that 160 acre quarter. And so we're planning on slowly farming this more and more ourselves. So part of this will be our future grassland and maybe who knows we'll have more buildings on the property in the future. walking back towards our property. It's time to put some animals back in their safe housing. It's such a nice mild day. It's around zero. The turkeys are outside right now. We have beautiful sunshine. And we're so blessed to have all this space and quiet. There literally is nothing really surrounding us and no movement, everything is quiet. Look at that open space. I'll try to make a 360 here all the way around. There's the tree line. Like I said, that section over there we technically don't own, but we are allowed to use it. It's attached to the rest of our property. Yeah, this glorious open space. We're so blessed to have all this peace and quiet. So in the fall of 2023, after they harvested all the canola from the field. They already prepared the land for the 2024 growing season by fertilizing it. So in the ground right now here, we have what is called a hundred pounds of nitrogen. So it is well fertilized for a rapid growth of wheat. Because they never plant the same crop in the same field every year. They rotate crops. So, was it barley two years ago? Last year, canola. This year, it will be wheat. And so, what we're doing is this section over here, basically, that we're looking at. This will be a section about two acres that the farmer is going to put wheat in and at the same time we are going to be planting grass seeds in here. And so it's a mixture of three different types of grasses that do very well here in the prairies. So the wheat plants will be a cover crop And together with the grass, it will start to germinate and sprout very quickly because it's high in nitrogen. And so by July, maybe beginning of August, we're going to probably end up cutting it and then baling the grass for the winter months for our cows. And then after that, whatever time is remaining in August, September that the grasses start to grow again. 
and we'll take the cows out, have this properly staked off, and they will be able to graze, graze here maybe for a month or two while we uh, have that opportunity. Gotta love it. It's beautiful out here. You can see the barn in the back. So what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a pathway here. And when we create the two acres of electric fencing around the grass here, the cows will be able to roam around in between these trees. So of course we're clearing out any deadwood that's in there make a nice proper path but they'll be able to use this space so they can stay in the shade if they want to we'll have an access there to water so for us it's easy to fill the water on the other side of this tree line and then of course they can just walk through the trees into the field and graze when they want and then go back out so you can imagine that we'll be seeing the sunrise somewhere in this area early in the morning and then the sun will be going quite high over top and so it will be more later in the afternoon that the sun will be on the other side like it is now in the, in the western corner so just like the beginning you can see again a piece of equipment it was abandoned and left here for whatever life expectancy they expected for the machine to stay here. So, quite remarkable all the stuff that was left behind. Something here set against a tree. Of course, you can see all the little seedlings from the coniferous trees that ended up here on the side and managed to germinate and grow. All right, you can see here a whole section, beautiful evergreens. Way too many, way too close. So hopefully we can dig them up in such a fashion that we can save most of them. But give them more room to breathe and better use for us. So I've got to carefully watch where I walk. As we move through the tree line here, you can see, of course, there's the chicken coop. And of course, their pen area where they'll spend the summer. So again, if you look at the trees here, a lot of the trees that are all lined up neatly. So a lot of these are probably already planted. And then of course, new ones have sprouted in between. But there's evidence, though, that is straight-lined. Again, here, a piece of concrete slab. Don't know where it came from, who put it here. But apparently there was no use for it anymore. So there we are, on the back side of the barn. Of course, you can see and then it's the paint, only a small section of it, the job, but hopefully we can finish this year. And there are the girls, the turkeys. Let's say hello to them. Hello girls, how are you? <laughs> 